Welcome to Solving Problems in Biomechanics Statics. We like to flirt with the idea of dealing with statically determinate systems, which are when the number of balance equations equals the number of unknowns we need to solve for. However, unfortunately, that is never the case in the human body. There are way too many unknowns, and we can't quite solve for all of them at once at this point. So here's what we like to do. Like almost any time in engineering, we will be making simplifying assumptions such that we end up only needing to solve for as many unknowns as we have balance equations. We want to start any problem by sketching the physical system. For the purposes of this video, I will work with a simple problem to show you the steps we want to take in solving the systems. Make sure to label everything, forces, angles, geometric positions, moments, lines of action, or even axes of rotation. Whatever you know about the system, sketch it. Make sure to take note of the values you know for the angles, lengths, forces, and moments. Then take note of what you do not know. These will be your unknowns. In this problem, we know the load applied. However, we do not know the reaction forces at the strut or the cable. Struts can take compressions, so we will be looking for an unknown force applied at C by the strut. Cables can support tension, but not compression. Thus, we will have an unknown reaction force applied at B due to the cable. With our knowns and unknowns, we can draw the free body diagram. In our free body diagram, we will be labeling the forces and their respective angles. Make sure to also include a coordinate system with your sketch and, specifically, with your free body diagram. Now here's the big bucks question. Is the system statically determinate? Well, the system is in 2D, which, as you may recall, means that we have three balance equations, two of which are force balance equations. Since we have two force unknowns, then it makes sense that we have enough equations to solve for the two unknowns we want to solve for. So yes, the problem is statically determinate. We can then write down our governing balance equations. They will include the summation of forces along the x direction, equals zero, and the summation of forces along the y direction, equals zero. Solving these equations will take some simple algebra. There are many ways to do it. A quick way by hand would be to decompose each force into its x and y components and solve the system of equations for their unknowns. I won't go through all the minute details of the calculations, but I am adding enough steps that you should be able to follow along on your own. Just pause the video and check the solving for the unknowns using the balance equations. Generally checking if the results make physical sense involve looking at the final number and making sure it is reasonable within the system we drew and the knowns we had in the beginning. Just make sure that positive and negative values go with the coordinate system and no values fluctuate too crazily unless that's expected.
Now I want you to be careful about one specific type of system. This system is called improperly constrained. It happens when the number of balance equations equals the number of unknowns. However, the unknowns we need to solve for cannot be solved with the equations we have. Here's one example. We have this structure with three rollers at the bottom and three forces acting at an angle on top. The forces up top can be broken into X and Y components. Because we have rollers at the bottom, the reaction force is upwards. Can you see where there is an imbalance? The force components in the y direction can balance each other out, no problem. But the components along the x direction are alone. They cannot balance each other out. This is a case in which although we have the same number of balance equations and unknowns, the system is not statically determinate. Okay, I am sure you are ready to tackle some problems. I will see you next time.